So last weekend, a very, very exciting second round of the ATK Pro Series 2020 held at Silverstone. Great racing, but also some great incidents. And we thought we'd get together with our resident expert racing driver, Tasman Pepper, and the man that makes the decisions at the end of the day, Jonathan Benz, to have a little review at a couple of the big talking points from uh, the last round. How are you guys doing? All good? Yeah, good. How are you? Yeah, all good. Ready to box and fight, Taz. <laughs> As <laughs> <your> always. <laughs> Johnny, you, you, you obviously, what's quite critical here, the instance we're going to look at this evening, obviously only focusing on the pros, but no decision okay. as yet has been made. How does it work before we get into the replays? I know you obviously live as the race is happening, you dishing out incidents, reports and looking at penalties and, and issuing them. That's right, but are, yeah. the, are the drivers able to post-race submit their own issues that you would then review? Yes, after the race they would, you know, they have a specific incident in mind that they felt that they were hard done by. So after the race they'll they'll pop into the Discord and uh, channel that's relevant and they will post their own name. Oh, the the violator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then as well as what lap and um, a brief description of what happened and preferably a little video of what of what happened in the incident as well and then we can you know we can dig into it in in such instances as this okay well, john i think let, let, let's have a look we've got a couple of videos so um talk us through the first incident then we can have a we can have a look at the at the replays okay great okay first incident that we have handpicked here is from kieran patterson car number 123 and there was a slight incident between himself and Julian Familiaris in the Mercedes-Benz 23. This happened on lap one. Right, okay, so this is, uh, this is playback from, uh, from that incident. Um, we're obviously tracking Kieran Patterson. There's a little bit of, bit of a battle going with the Porsches and uh, Julian Familiaris in that uh, Merc uh, AMG. And this is where things start going awry. Oh, oh. <laughs> the collective. <laughs> oh. Uh, so two cars collected there. That was uh, Ferrant as well as uh, Patterson. But um, hang on, I like I, I like this. Yeah, this because watch out, watch out, because you see, he doesn't get tapped at all. He no actually wiggle. onto yeah, the so, grass. Mm, so Julian actually lost passenger. control. Oh, jeez, like yeah. It's almost as if uh, uh, as if he was like he was actually gunning for him. Like he wasn't trying to back out of the whole situation. He was yeah, going he was, for it because he thought he yeah. was pushed off. If you look from from Patterson's view here, okay, they're all you know committed to the limit now, and that little wiggle. But now, I tell you, as a driver, if that guy's on the grass, I know exactly what's going to happen. Mm. He's coming right back on. I'm not sure where they thought <laughs> he was going to go after this. You, you know, I, th I think there are two things, just from my side. We can see, obviously, uh, losing the rear end there onto the grass. Uh, the tricky thing is, they're coming through that, that left sweep at pace. It's not a big runoff, um, a run down to the, the tight right-hander. So, very difficult to stop that car on the grass. I, I get that. But yeah, also, but he also he goes down a gear. Oh no. <laughs> he's already gone down two gears. He's as if he's going to try and make that corner. <laughs> but, but 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 I but I guess that also shows that he is he's on the brakes and he's trying to stop the car. Yeah, which is which is correct. He's doing the right thing. He just never got it stopped. But yeah, I, I it's, think, it's it's definitely not a malicious um, case of bowling here. What he was trying to do in this case was to prevent getting a drive-through penalty by doing an extreme track cut so he was trying to keep it as tight as possible to do a rejoin but that would have never worked on the grass and, yeah. and you know he's definitely there's no question about who's at fault i just think personally as a driver i would have seen that coming from a mile away oh but he also then causes trouble in this next corner again check no it's the porsche he's <laughs> you know, he, yeah. you know, he's, he's further he's further back too <laughs> But it's but, but it's it's a it's a tricky one. I think the, the the big issue for me is I get him. He's gearing down. He's he's obviously trying to still make the corner. But when you realise you're not, I think what would have helped is to at least try and take the corner instead of just picking a straight line, because that's when he became a bowling ball. Yeah. Yeah. He, you know, there was, he no, there was no steering been, input. Yeah. He, if he had just completely backed out of it, he, there was you know there's tarmac to the right of him. He could yeah. He could have slowed yeah. down straight away. 
Yeah, and he could have stopped, but he did most of his breaking on the grass, which was yeah. just not going to do. Is, I'm glad you cleared that up because, I mean, obviously, I don't know what, what the game's put there. So a lot of the time that can be gravel, but that oh, is yeah, quite yeah. clearly asphalt. So he could have actually run properly wide and just run yeah. completely onto the tar and stopped the car easily. Yeah. That changes everything, in my opinion, actually. He, he didn't he didn't want to back out of this. He made well, a mistake. He's definitely at fault. Yeah. yeah. So that, I think that's conclusive. I would, I would in this case, with the race being over, and Taz, it'd be great to see your input here as well, is that I think in cases like this that are being reviewed post-race, it's happened, you can't change the results. Um, for me, it'd be a case of the next round, wherever you qualify, do like a five-place grid penalty drop, as an example. That, that, that's what I'd look at, at doing here. Because or maybe, you know, I mean, like, he, he did he score points? Or well, he obviously did score points, but I mean... I think he needs to be penalised enough to go behind the guys that he's taken off. No, but it's tough because this is lap one. You know yeah, what I mean? Lap one, lap one is definitely a drive-through penalty. Yeah, yeah. but 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 he never but he never got to do the drive-through penalty. So what? No, he... but, but then what we would do is add the value of the drive-through penalty, which will probably be close to forty-five seconds to his. Yeah, yeah. well, then that's the that's what he needs to get done. Actually, I disagree. I you really want him do. to have a penalty at the next round? A hundred percent. Because the thing is, if, if if this incident was dealt with in the race, it's very easy for you to then put a drive-through penalty. Yeah. Guys, remember, that this is like a, they did 26 laps. So much happens in a race. So I think I think you've got to say the race is run. There's nothing we can do now um, because it's actually not going to change. Their race is ruined in a way. So they're playing catch up driving. It changes the complete dynamic. And I think it's hard to then kind of play dictator in a case like this. I would just say, listen, we didn't review it in the race. Um, if we had of, you would have got a drive through. But because mm. of that, we're gonna grid, we're gonna dock you five five grid penalty places at the next. I don't know. It just seems yeah. it just seems hard to implement stuff like that post race. Well, okay, we do we do have the option of what we would call a qualifying ban where the driver is not allowed to set a lap time during qualifying for okay. the race. So he's start the at the back of the grid. Yeah. I just, I'm watching yeah. the replay again. You check that, Taz. He actually went properly onto the tar and then opted to go back onto back, the cross. Exactly. He was trying to yes. get back to the track. Yeah. He, he, he wanted to get back into the race, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Th that would be my call. I don't know, Jonathan. I, I would, I would penalize him at the next round. Yeah. Yep. That's definitely something we can, we can implement for sure. So now watch after this incident has happened and Ferrant rejoins the track. Yeah, he causes major causes major mayhem and that's in that new that's in the new section of uh, of the circuit. That's through farm, yeah. Watch out. <laughs> but he I don't This is in the arena still, complex. I don't, watch I don't think he did anything right? Wrong? No, he oh watch. you got hit from behind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but come on. No, um, that's fine. Yeah, um, I don't think, like, you, you can complain about that, but at the end yeah. of the day, he's joined the track when the yeah. traffic is coming past, and that guy's already committed to the corner. And did, I did know he that's quite a, bl a blind corner so, as well. So, th so that incident was also a complaint that was laid. Did Ferran complain about that? Yes, but probably he's Didn't got he the red rage. Positions? He's got the red rage from the previous incident, so I think we need to keep that in mind. So, you know, I think it's pretty cut and dry as well. He didn't unsafely mm. rejoin the track, but he was very slow. Um, the yeah. car behind him didn't really take that into account and did a light tap, causing him to fishtail. Um, no merit. Lost no the, places. He lost no places. Nobody spun. Yeah, so there are nothing you can have there, I reckon. I, I agree, Taz, and you, but you know what my thing is, I'd actually have a chat to Ferrantia and say, listen, your car's damaged, and all he's, I mean, all he's doing is basically putting himself on the racing line, trying to recompose himself, so any little taps and knocks he's going to get, well, I think that's kind of self-inflicted, eh? Oh, late, but he was late, <laughs> on, he was late on the brakes, looking at it from that angle. He's yeah, like, he was a little bit <laughs> Like, when you look at it from that, because from the other angle, it's like, yeah, oh, there's an incident back there, that's Julian the tank, doesn't it? Julian, Julian gets involved oh, again. Yeah, so, yeah. He takes out an Audi, I think it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bump, bump, bump. Wait, yeah. Oh, that wasn't Julian. Sorry, Julian. That was Alexis. So was yeah. that um, 
Hampson, I think. Hampson, yeah. Okay, so so that incident where um, the white McLaren also bumped for run, that was another incident we were going to look at. I, I think... I it has think come that in a bit hard. Came out the corner yeah. and the guy didn't get taken out. And yeah, there's no loss kind of effect just from that. Yeah, so you can't really penalize him for it. If that guy in front of him lost positions, then fair go. But other than yeah. that, you can't really... I suppose also taking into account that Ferrant is hurting at the moment in terms of pace. So yeah. probably caught the other guys out. Okay, but no, no, not too much uh, damage there. Yeah, I, I just think the guys need to realize too that, you know, this is racing. Uh, I, 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 you're going to get bumped. I mean, rubbing is racing. Yeah. It's a cliche. The saying works. And I think unless somebody is maliciously putting you on a, a three quarter tap under braking, you know, that sort of stuff is, is hectic. But I think yeah. when when no damage is done. But I mean, are, are you playing that um, the one with uh, with Hamson next? Because yeah, you know, that was that was exactly that. They'll tap on the rear, and there's no recovering from that. Okay, let's line that one up. That is. Yeah, yeah, it comes. Yeah. So the Audi gets a bit Audi gets a bit busy coming into that complex. Have a look. He makes a dive up the inside. Good argy bargy uh, too, which is lovely. Check the Audi come in hot. <laughs> Having a Lights good run the in. Brakes. Yeah. Dives up the inside, gets tapped, yeah, but yeah, it's the next tap, that one there. Hits oh, him but on he the kind rear. of runs he kind of runs into the Lexus and then the Lexus kind of gives it back to him, doesn't he? Yeah. See the problem for me though is he is in front of the Lexus, the Audi. So he's got right to that corner. So when you're tapping a guy on the rear wheel, have a look at Yeah, here. but not initially, he doesn't. No, no, but now he does, check here. Now he's got him. Yeah. See? Yeah. So that for me is Lexus all over. That's Lexus' fault. I don't know, Taz. I oh, know, I agree. He did tap him around, but yeah. he kind of forced his way through in the previous corner. So it's, I don't know, it's a bit of a tough, tough call but that I'm, one. I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy mirror to mirror for me. I mean, you know that, like, have a look. I mean, it's, it, it is quite aggressive, but watch him though. They go side by side here. So actually, the Lexus was trying to come back on the line. It looked like, looked like the Lexus was trying to take up a position. But who's responsible? Because at the end of the day, I, I can see as the Lexus driver, as Hampson, I can see where that Audi is. So I've got to make that. I've got to make that that correction. Then have a look here. He's in front. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he could have. He he could have. The Lexus could have backed out, and so totally. the Audi could have given him space. Yeah. So my, my 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 gut feel is that the person who is the most able to avoid that incident is Hampson in the Lexus. Yeah. You know, I feel like. Mm. Say it. <laughs> you can disagree with Marius, hey? We don't mind. <laughs> oh, no, no, listen, it's just opinions, eh? I think, you yeah. know what? I think the, the Audi muscles his way through there, and the Lexus is like, well, I'm not having any of it. I'm staying yeah. where I'm at. And the Audi turns into him. The Lexus doesn't turn into the Audi. I think Zander reckons yeah. he's fine. He's turning in on the racing line. What, what did you think, though, Jono? Because you didn't actually say it. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, I didn't get a chance yet. I think that the. Uh, I think that in this case, oh, it's. I actually put a little bit of blame on both. Um, you know, looking at so many angles here, the Audi knows the Lexus is there. The Lexus knows the Audi's there, mm. and they both could have backed out of it. Who had the right of way? I don't know. Technically, uh, technically the Audi, um, yeah. but the thing is, if there's a car there, you still can't turn through the car. But the car wasn't there. You see, I mean, he'd made the move. But my thing is, I, I, I just think this is a racing incident, so I don't think there are any penalties. But I think your discussion with both drivers is, hey, listen, there's a lot of argy bargy going in there. Both of you need to learn to leave each other space. And especially for Hampson, that is avoidable because you can see the car in front of you, so you can get on the brakes. Um, and, and the previous Zander, corner is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and also for Zander just to say, you know the guy's there, so don't just assume your racing line because you can get tapped and spun around like you did. I just, I don't think it's, I don't think it's penalizable. I just think it's one yeah. of those racing incidents. Yeah. I do need to both get warned up. Yeah. Yeah, I think because, because I, I definitely, I think there's, there's blame to be held for both of those guys. Okay. For sure. Hey, we okay, all agreed. I, Woo! <laughs> Not right. Okay, I've got a <laughs> good one for you guys. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, Chris Heineke, number 96. 
Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. Okay, Taz, Taz, off you go. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Now this this is a, a very good one because obviously both very experienced drivers, and you can see it by by how they approach it. McCall, I think maybe very brave trying to overtake in this corner. Yeah. Firstly, Heineke left way. Heineke leaves him room and. Yeah, McCall because he actually obviously just gets there. excited and gets on the power and he, just like understeers straight into it. That's that's the unfortunate part of that corner. If you want to overtake at that corner, you need to compensate. You can't take it at the same speed as normal. Yeah. Morgan, Especially Morgan, then, Morgan, Morgan yeah. to blame. Yeah, I agree because I mean, what he gave, he definitely gave him room. Yeah. And Chris, Chris saw it coming and he was like, "Okay, yeah. nothing I can yeah. do about this now." Yes, and he just went in the same speed that he he would normally do it. So. Yeah. This is an easy one. How do we? How do we penalize that one? That, that's probably a that's a time penalty. That one five seconds. I agree because he doesn't actually lose too much. He loses two positions, I think. So it's not like. Yeah. Jono, that was pretty pretty straightforward. What uh, what's next? Hopefully, it's a bit more difficult. Okay, let's see something more difficult. I've got uh, Richard van Koller, number twenty seven in the Bentley lap one turn one. Uh, these are always mayhem because I mean you know lap one turn one rush of blood it's a lottery so let's have a look what happens here who who complained here as as so this as was Richard. this was Richard yes okay, um, so he's feeling hard done by <laughs> yeah I th I think you know in a way I, I I don't think he did a bad job um, complaining about this one but. I Good find start. it's going to be very difficult to find who's at fault here. Um, oh, you know, him? it is. Is, is, that, is, that a, is that a Hampson and Zander again? That's, that, that looks is like Mr. A, Hampson. That, that, that's the Audi and the, and the, and the, and the Lexus again. <laughs> wow. That's it. Okay, let's have a look. Taz, what do you think? Oh, I think it's Pinky's fault. Yeah, I don't know why he spun around. I mean, there's always going to be chaos. Yeah. But he's also gone in later on the brakes. Yeah, Anyone okay. else? He's, he's gone straight deep. into him. Yeah. Listen, he got a good he got a good start here on the McLaren. Put himself nicely positioned for that corner. I suppose that's a tricky thing because I mean the car's left and right of you. So. Yeah, I think he was trying to leave space for the car on the inside. They're almost three wide in there. Mm. Yeah. And I think the Bentley is leaving space for the McLaren. I think that's the problem. Yeah. Oh, he is. Yeah. Oh, the Lexus turns in, but like, I don't know. It's but you also can't one. blame him for, for turning in, but because he's, he's not turning for the apex, but he's not turning as if there's three, two cars on the inside of yes, it. Yes, he doesn't know about the McLaren on the inside of the Bentley. No. That's yeah. the difference. Like, he the, doesn't the, know the, why the Bentley's not turning. This kind of sounds like a turn one incident at Spa in Formula One, and usually it's Max Verstappen, you know, and, and there are <laughs> yeah. three cars going in, and no one can see the. Yeah, you, know, you see, uh, I mean, if you look at it from there, the Lexus could have left a lot of space, but I mean, he's also not anywhere near turning into the apex, so he has no, actually. He has space. left a lot of space. He has. He's left a more than enough space, but he doesn't know the McLarens up yeah. inside. I don't so think, I think what? I don't think he's yeah. involved. Racing no, incident. I I think it's racing incident because uh, exactly that. The he can't see the third person in there. And he has yeah. left him room, but he obviously doesn't know why the Bentley's not turning. Yeah. yeah. So I think let's take another look at Richard. He's got a second complaint here against uh, Mr. Familiaris from Jeez. earlier. It's a, it's a usual suspects at the moment. Absolutely sticking close to one another. <laughs> but interestingly enough, this happens on a straight. There's no corners involved here. So let's take a look. So this is the build up to uh, to hangar. So they're obviously going through maggots and beckets and then on to um, onto that long hangar straight. Oh such a great section of the circuit, eh? He messes that up a bit and loses yeah. his drive for this whole yeah, Julian's straight. got the run on him for sure. And let's give some squeeze. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh yeah, yeah. That's definitely his fault, isn't it? He doesn't have to squeeze him as much as he is. 
Oh, but he's squeezing him right. as much as possible. I don't know. Because yeah. you, you must remember the track also goes like it curves a little bit to the well right. So if the move goes even more to the left, it's going to completely go off the track. Stas, yeah. spot on. If, if we spot can go on. back, if we can go back to that when he makes his little move to the right. Yeah, watch the Merc does make a move to the right, but that's because the track is curving. It starts its curve. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. At that, that board, at that marker board. Yeah. So, Tasman, well, well. If you watch where the Merc ends up, he's actually on the curb there. Yeah. So he's yeah. following the line of the track. Oh, he's pretty much on the edge of the edge of the track. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, and he's got he's got to start turning for the corner, otherwise he's in the kitty litter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, Julia, can, Julia's yeah. got to take, got to start turning. So, yes, I yeah, don't yeah. like this whole agreeing thing, eh? Uh, you know what? <laughs> this wasn't it's supposed to happen, guys. Argument? <laughs> no, but I mean, we only <laughs> we only argue when they're those fifty fifties. But I mean, when things are cut and dry like that, I mean, it's like, come on. Okay, so what? So what do you? I mean, nothing can happen here because obviously he suffered, so he's already he's already served his penalty. Correct. Yeah, yeah but he needs a warning or something because he needs also he can't crowd a crowd a car. Okay, I just think when when these things get dealt with now, Jonathan, when you go back to the drivers yeah. and explain to them what happened, I mean that's their that's their punishment and that's lesson learned. Hopefully, um, exactly. not to do that again next time. You know. Because yeah, he, he came off. He came, he certainly paid his penalty there. <laughs> and then I think let's get to the piece de resistance. You know, there was no race race report, an incident report done for this. So, you know, while we will be laying out our opinions on this, we won't actually be issuing any penalties on this one. It's a crucial one, this for me, because it, it 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 was so it had such a big effect on the race, and it's also up at the front. It's not yeah. back of the pack. So, yeah, I think there are a lot of we, we might argue here, Taz. Let's have a look. As it is, I mean, they're going into Vale, which is famous for overtaking, very very tight left hander. No, I think it's Jordan's fault. Jordan? No, Quinton. Jason. Jason, sorry, Jason's you, fault. Do you think it's Jason's fault? The second yes. Porsche. Yes. Why? Jason stays to the right hand side, okay? If you just watch it closely now, Jason stays to the right hand side. When he sees um, Quinton make a move, that's when he starts crowding him into the corner. So, in a normal circumstance, he'll break straight. There's no yep. reason why he's going to break into, into the corner. But okay. on that specific one, as Quinton makes a move, he then crowds him into the corner check. It's very, it's very similar to what happened at uh, Clubhouse in round one, you know what I mean, where you're kind of easing off the brakes and taking a bit of an earlier line in. But for me, what I think is quite interesting, I'd love to see Quinton on the brakes because he does pull out quite late. Now, I I'm wondering if he would have made the turn if Jason wasn't there. Okay. That, that's, the only, that's my only consideration here because have a look, now he pulls late. Well, I would have done the same though because you almost you're almost dumbing the guy in yeah, front of you to make sure up. he doesn't block. Yeah, yeah. You sort of holding out, and at the last minute you're taking the dive up his inside. So what's? I, I just want to check. I just want to see what is if if he would have made the corner though. Oh, uh, uh, that was a classic dummy. Eh? That oh, yeah, was a yeah. classic dummy. Yeah. If you see, um, Jason goes to to go defensive. And then at the last minute, when he sees Quinton's not coming up the inside, he sort of goes to the right. And as Quinton makes a move, he then dives yeah. back to the inside. So he actually changes lanes. Yeah. Yeah, because if you look at it, if you look at it from that angle, he never had a he never had an opportunity to to have a run at Charles in front of him. Exactly. You know what I mean? And was, also, too, if you see where Charles turning in, yeah. Quinton's, I mean, um, Jason's coming. Yeah, Jason's found himself in no See, man, in, in, he's gone left, no then he's gone land, right, no and now yeah. he's coming left again. So he's changed yeah. direction three times. Can we go yeah. on, board, we're on board with Jason now? Let's have a look at his movement. He's yeah. going to go left because he has a car he's, on his yeah. He goes, starts coming right. As he makes a move, he then changes direction again. But have a I look. Think there's, not, there's not a big adjustment on his wheel, though. Eh? Have a look. But it doesn't have to be, though. He's yeah. just crowding him. Check. He's just crowding yeah. him enough. Yeah, there. You see how much earlier he's turning in compared yeah. to Shoal. It's a lot. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. 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 So when when somebody's overtaking another car, it really takes the other car to be compliant. Mm. You know, you can you can try be as defensive as you can, but I mean, what's the point of putting your car on the apex 
and causing an incident. Yes, but you know what, Jono, I I, I hear you. Now that I look at that, though, he would never have made the overtake move. 100% he would have. You reckon? 100% he would have. If he was left room, they may have, maybe they might have touched a little bit. At the end Jason, of the day, would have, Jason would have had the advantage again on the next right hand. Exactly. If he had just given him room, he would have been able to go around his outside and had the inside. And had the inside. Oh, so Jonathan, true, actually. You, you, yeah. you, you spot on in terms of fully committed under brakes. You can't break any harder. <laughs> you, you yeah. know. <laughs> and I mean, and, and I think, you know, was that over enthusiastic from Quaid to attack at this point of the race? Like no. that, I don't know because maybe he's using um, Wilkin as kind of a, you know, to force the issue a bit. So, so the fact that Wilkin's holding Jason up a bit, you know, it allows him to make these kind of moves. Personally, I would have done the exact same thing. Yeah, he's, he's close enough. It's, it's, he's it's close quite, enough, isn't he? It's quite. Do you see though. where he taps him though, Marius? Where he taps him, he's he's at his his B pillar. Yeah. You know what's interesting though? I mean, Jason doesn't take sure. the same line as Charles. Eh? He actually puts himself in the middle of the track. Have a look when he have a look when he exits when they exit out of Stowe, um, heading through to heading through to Val. Have a look. Look how far left. Look how far left Jason actually is compared to Charles. Check because where he's, he's actually going because he's trying to block, block already. And then yeah. he realizes that he yeah. doesn't have. See, he's to put him, he's put himself in the middle. But have a look there. So this is what I find interesting. That view is quite critical because it changes people's outlooks a little bit because he never ever picked a side he put himself in the middle of the track check have a but look he here. initially does pick a side though Morris. he stays left i go yeah. sort of to the middle then he starts going more to the right and then when he changes that when he goes for the move that's when he can yeah. lift again yeah look i yeah. think jason i think jason paid the ultimate price here because he should have left space and he would have had the advantage for the next right hander what killed him is not putting it in reverse and getting off the track and having to wait for all 25 cars to go past. Yeah. That, was, uh, oh, yes. that, that, that was the harsh penalty eh, for him. Yeah. Yeah. For He's sure. already got his penalty, but he also needs to know that he can't keep changing lanes. Yeah. Um, if he wants to go defensive, he must stay defensive and allow see, the other guy to try and make a move around the outside. You see, the hard thing is, I mean, Quaid, to answer your question, John, I mean, you mm. want Quaid to go for moves like this. It's flipping brilliant racing. Yeah, one one can hope that the drivers would learn something from from this, you know, and not hopefully take this that what we're doing here as an attack on them or their yeah. skills or anything like that. Oh no, please, no. This is, I mean, race r- rush of blood. I mean, we've we, we know we know what that's like, and that's why you've got racing incidents. But I'm I'm quite glad that you said that this wasn't one that was officially logged as a as a complaint so yeah that's that says a lot because i mean i think jason would have been the one that would have logged it the fact that he hasn't says that he's probably agreed with what we've said yeah 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 jonna really really awesome putting this together um taz good fun to sit and go through these uh through these reviews yeah oh, i'm glad very we got cool. to argue a little bit and have some entertainment but um i think overall very good racing Few little incidents, but nothing like too hectic. And I think the guys who had the crashes would have learned a little, little things, a uh, little for a few things from it. And um, hopefully, the next round will be a little bit better. John, and your, sure. your job, your job isn't easy because I, you know, I imagine, <laughs> you know, you race as well. So you know, it's difficult, guys. Ah, you're not going to be impartial because you've got teammates that are racing, but. You take your job really seriously, and I think that's what also helps having other people to banter with on this. So it's not just you know oh, one yeah, person. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> and it's great having guys of and both of your, um, you know, valued opinions in here, and to you know add the extra quality to these assessments. Yeah, maybe that's not so a bad idea. I think the drivers will appreciate that. Yeah, and like, and I think what's key as well. I mean, we're not having a go at any of them. Um, I think this mm. is, you know, we want to kind of create this. I think it just, it just makes for better racing. Um, and my goodness me, do we have uh, ten good races to look forward to? So, uh, yeah, I can't we wait. Can take, we can take a breather before Zandvoort in two weeks' time. Yeah, can't wait. Looking forward to it.